Where are we supposed to look? Shalom. Welcome to The Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar, together with my co-host Mark Rohn at Statewide News Service and jbiztechvalley.com. Well, Rabbi, you know, we always love to showcase the arts here on The Jewish View. The arts are very important within the Jewish community, especially when one of the directors is Jewish. And uh, we have Iris Singer here, who's the director of Point of View Players. And what is the uh, well, welcome to the Jewish View. It's the first time that you're on. Thank you. And you're, you live in Albany. I live in Albany. And the plays are in Albany, too. Yes, all of them have been in Albany so far. And you have the plays at which uh, outlet, or do you just roam around? We, uh, we started off with um, Congregation Ohav Shalom on Crumkill Road. And my friend Michelle Sanders and I were director and co-director. I was the director, she was the co-director. And our very first show, our debut, was Crossing Delancey. And that was in the summer of 2012. And when we finished that one, we went on to do a Shana Madel, mm -hmm. which was a drama, a very poignant drama of a Holocaust surviving family. Mm -hmm. And we did that in January of 2013. Mm -hmm. After that, Michelle ventured off on her own right. and became director. She has her own group. And so I went out on my own. But I don't have my own venue, so we do travel around and try to find as much theater space as we can. Your themes, though, it seems like they're all Jewish themes, or you keep to Jewish-minded themes. Um, because um, Crossing Delancey is Jewish. And, and Shana Madoff. It surely is. I mean, and actually, um, Prisoner of Second Avenue was not really any denomination, but the Odd Couple female version yes. had, Jewish, had some Jewish Tones, theme in yeah. that. We did that show, and after that, I did a couple of more. They weren't really Jewish-oriented. They were just for anybody, really, because they weren't in a Jewish place. And you had a uh, you had Ben's Jammin' Art Splits seeking youth perform, or what's this Ben's Jammin' Art Splits, or did you do something with that, or not? No, I never okay. did anything with that. All right. So what about um, Troy Civic Susical? No, that was no. one of my actresses. She was in oh, that. Okay. One of my actresses from um, Odd Couple. She was involved with um, Susical. Okay, so she was the lead, and she 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 came from there to me. I see. So all right. So you're looking. Uh, so you basically perform at Saint Sophia's. We have done two shows at Saint Sophia's yeah. Greek Church. Uh, they have a gorgeous banquet That's on room. White Hall Road. Yeah. Yes, they and, rented it to us. Right. So you had. Two shows there. Two shows there, and I we are now doing a show at 40 no Russell Road, North Russell Road, adjacent from Price Chopper right. at Westgate. The um, people that rent there are sub-renting it to us. What okay. kind of theater is there? It's, uh, it used to be Hilton, John Hilton Center, the, oh, or New Music. It and used to be a musical uh, a store. Right. And then right, and now it's a theater. Right. So your actors or uh, actresses are uh, amateur. I mean, these are volunteer. That people I know sometimes they have groups and mm -hmm. you know they say anybody who wants to act. I mean, these are just amateur people. Often you say who uh, wants to act in our plays. I know some places do that. Well, when we started Crossing the Lancy, we auditioned a lot of people. And one of the women, she happened to be a member of Ohav Shalom, and um, she had never acted in her life. Oh, yeah. So we auditioned her, and she was fabulous, and we gave her a lead role, and she brought the house down. So ever since then, I thought, well, why not give people a chance? Some people may have never acted, but they love acting, and they may never have trained, but they're naturally good. Do you find and those people more difficult to direct, or you don't have bad habits to break, so maybe they're easier to direct? I find them in some ways difficult. In some ways, it, they're fresh and innocent. You, they, you can mold them. Yeah. But in other ways, it's a little difficult because they're not comfortable on the stage, and they don't know how to move. You have to direct that part of it. Mm -hmm. For example, don't put your, give your back to the audience. Right. Don't go in front of the other, you know, your co-actors mm -hmm. when you're crossing over. How to sit properly in a chair. I mean, little things like that, you really have to take baby steps So am I that. sitting properly? No. Yeah. <laughs> you're sitting fine, you're sitting yeah. fine, I'm sitting fine. But, but upstage, downstage, do they, they, they don't, don't know understand. those? They don't understand, and so you have to like... 
give them drama one hundred and one. Yeah, it's kind of one hundred and one. Theater one hundred and one. Yeah. Where I prefer people with a more experience that have been on stage before right. because they're used to the lights. They're used to being in the dark for a moment what while they change scenes. They're used to all that. What about uh, memorization? Do you find people have trouble? remembering what lines that they that they have to say or everyone has trouble with that yeah. not just newbies everybody um, I always tell them you have to be off book by a certain date right. let's say I give them a month memorize so, at least act one so off book <laughs> means that you have it all memorized including songs and, and dialogue and you're not and you don't have any uh, any papers in front of you or you're not you know, cheating by looking at your hand right. or your arm or something, you know, yeah. okay. <laughs> I have told them that for, let's say, Act One, they have to be off book in a month, and um, mm -hmm. they wouldn't be off book. <laughs> and then we'd go to Act Two, like three weeks later. You need to be off book for Act One and Two. Yeah. And sometimes during Tech Week, we still have people, I don't remember my lines. <laughs> so I say to them, make it up, anything, <laughs> right. because the audience won't know. Right. Just How make long, it up. You know, you talk about time limit. Uh, what is the time from, you know, the, to, well, you have the play, of course, and then from practice, finally, to production? I like about three months if That's I can. That's a lot of time. Mm -hmm. I like to do it like that because I am not a late rehearsal person. I will not keep them till 11, 12 o'clock at night. I let them go home no later than 9.30. We start around 6.37 and um, because I have to go to bed and right. I have to go to work and right. I don't want to, what's the word, um, burn them out. Right. So you so work for DOT? I work for New York State Department of Transportation. Right. So that's good. So you still have to be up and I you have still have up. a day job. To, yes, I do. But you can't give up because of this. <laughs> no, I can't. You can't no, give no. up your day job. No. no. <laughs> this doesn't pay the... Mm -mm. Okay. So, so tickets are reasonable. They're not like Broadway price tickets. <laughs> no, of course not. We started off with um, $10 for seniors and yeah. students and 15 for adults. Yeah. And we kept it that way for a while, but we are going to up our prices a little bit. To 20? No, 18 for oh, adults, hi. 15 for, yeah, hi, mm. eight, uh, 15 for seniors and uh -huh. students because expenses are going up. Absolutely. Yeah. With the scenery, I mean, what's the main expenses, salaries and scenery? Or? Salaries? Um, no, yeah. no salaries. Nobody gets paid. There's no it's saying pure, that was as pure amateur. Pure entertainment, yes. Um, expenses are, are, we have a light and sound technician, which I have to pay him. He runs the lights and sound. And um, he bring, he rents all the equipment, like the microphones, yeah. the speakers, and the lights themselves. So he also wants to make money for yeah, what for sure. he's doing for there, our show. There's a, uh, a Jewish chorus group called Neima. Mm -hmm. And did you ever think of co -produ you know, having a co-production with them and having a play with their chorus and then you know working together? I never did, no. All right. You know, that's no, what I was thinking sure. because, of course, my favorite play is Fiddler on the Roof. Of course. Yeah, <laughs> like a lot of people, but a lot of Jewish people. But uh, do you have, like, that's a big production. Would that be, I mean, I'm just, I don't know anything about acting and production, but I just know there was a lot of actors there, and I don't know how many you have on in your plays. Uh, Crossing Delancey or something, how many actors and actresses you need, and Fiddler on the Roof would need all, you know. It says yeah. something scenes. about that you have 47 members and growing. <laughs> And I wasn't sure if that was in act, production or what the 47 members uh, referred to. Basically refers to people who joined Point of View Players, okay. people who have been in previous shows, people who yeah. are in current shows, okay. friends of people. Okay. They just keep joining. Excuse yeah. me. Yes. Okay. Well, that's good. But in any one play, how many would you have, let's say, in the ones that you pointed out, <coughs> Crossing the Land, Sea, or... How many actors? Oh, you Crossing the Lancy only had five. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Those are smaller, smaller plays, and, and you know something yeah. like Fiddler on the Roof. Mm -hmm. You know, where he's saying some big production with chorus group and mm -hmm. would need a lot more people. I've never done more than six people. Oh, oh really? Oh. That's what I was thinking over here. I've so never I done like 20. Yeah, I've never done 30. I've never done 40. And Fiddler on the Roof, the last time yeah, I've heard of it being done was in Circle Theater, I think. It was in um, Averill Park. 
and they had over 30 people. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I was saying. Yeah, that, yeah. That would need a major. It's a crowd. major production, and also it's a musical. And West well, that's what I was saying when he said music. I right. think you know that people would. You would need musical people to Musical, come you need them. a musical director, someone to coordinate the instruments that are where, being used. Where did you like get that. your interest in wanting to be the director, an artistic director? I started acting when I was 12. I was in my, actually 11. Yeah. That's my first play at, at Machane Giva, uh -huh. which I am a, an alumni of Camp, that's Camp Giva. And um, we did Oliver all in Hebrew. Really? And that was the first play I was ever in. And then when I was 12, we did another play, I don't remember, but it was also in Hebrew. Uh -huh. All of our plays were in Hebrew. Okay. And so the interest was spurned in me at that young age. And, um, and then in, when I was 14, 15, 16, I did plays for uh, USY and LTF, also at Temple Israel. And we did great, wonderful productions in English, but they were great. They were wonderful. We did The Wall when I was like... 15. We did the Rothschilds when I was 16. That was a musical. And uh, when I was around 2021, 20, I directed then high school children in Temple Israel. That's pretty good. I did. I directed while. Yentl. I was the no first one. one to direct Yentl before Barbara Streisand really? made her movie. Yes. Oh, before her movie. Before okay. her movie. I just was looking through some scripts and I came across Isaac Baschevis singer. They took it from you? They should have given you uh -huh. credits in the Broadway and, play. Already. And I, um, I directed it. I was 20 years old. Really? And we had a revolving stage. And it was a wonderful production done by 15, 16, and 17-year-olds. And... Um, after that, I did The Jazz Singer and The Fifth Season. Both of them had Jewish themes. Did you take a break? In, you know, was there a time when you just took a break from this, or were you been directing all the way through? Oh, no, I took a break. Oh, okay. After the third show, I waited until the late 90s before I did anything else. I did see. you ever think of going to that full-time? I mean, now you said like you're working for the state, but you know, there could be a full-time director on Broadway? I mean, if you started so young, you must have had a lot of talent. I, I, realistically, I don't think so. I think I enjoy doing it for what it is right now. Yeah. I think trying to venture out to go to Broadway where there's so much competition and having to move to New York. and No, I'm pretty comfortable doing it this way. Do you go to Broadway shows? I don't go to New York. No? No, I go to Proctor's. Uh -huh. They have and, everything there. And do you look at, when you see the staging at Proctor's, do you go, oh my gosh, well, how did I they, do. they shouldn't I have do. done that. Oh yes. no. Yes. Or they should, oh wow, I can not, learn from that. Oh, that's something. Not so much Proctor's. I think a couple of, of plays in, I don't want to mention where, but they were a little bit more local uh, theater groups. And they were actually equity, so yeah. you know they got paid. Right. The actors got paid, similar to Proctor. Well, Misty used to, New York State Theater Institute used to be equity too. That's right. Yeah. Well, I've gone to several of those shows. I've gone to a couple of uh, senior high school plays, and I would watch as a director, and I would say, "Oh my God, I cannot believe the director is allowing this," uh -huh. because I would never. Certain ways he positioned the actors, yeah. they couldn't be seen properly. Where you know the way, just the way they said their lines, didn't seem natural to me. And I don't allow that in my shows. Huh. You are natural up there. You are not you. Right. You are the character. That's right. right. Yeah, you have to be. Yeah. Yeah. And with, and with the news reporters at the Capitol, they have a press corps called the Legislative Correspondence Association, the LCA. And we put on a play every year. You were uh, in it also, Mark? I'm, I've been known to be in it. <laughs> really? I, All know. right, maybe I should come and see you then. No, because you couldn't. Don't uh, get into this now, but All you right. couldn't. Uh, but <laughs> anyway, the um, so I went to, uh, so, so we put on the play, and we start writing the script probably two months before showtime. Mm -hmm. And we have maybe two weeks of rehearsals. And this is an original script. It's a parody on all the goings on at the state government. And we have songs that we write and, and copy and script. And you know we go through the blocking. And we have a wonderful director who 
um, is, is, has a wonderful voice also. She's been with uh, terrific opera houses and opera companies around the country. And she comes here just for those, just for that short amount of time, just to do our play, our little play. And we raise money wow, for charity. That's great. Yeah. All in two weeks. And it's really from, we practice for two weeks mm -hmm. and then we're on stage and she keeps telling us if we don't memorize our lines, we're going to look foolish up there. I tell them that too. <laughs> and, you know, we, it's not, you know, but there have been times when, you know, the reporters, because, you know, it's a busy time of the year when yeah. we put it on in May or June. And so, you know, they would write their lines on their hands and, you know, some of the key words that they were faltering on. And <laughs> yeah, I, um, but, but, but it's all fun and, and we, it's, it's, fun, a par yeah. it's a parody. And so the first, so we have an opening night and a closing night. We have first night and second night. That's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. We don't do it multiple, a whole lot of time. So the first night we, that we have the play, it's uh, open for everyone to come and see the play. The second night, it's like $300 a ticket. And yeah, wow. and we do it down at the Hilton. And it's for charity. And everyone knows that it's for charity. So, and they always come and give something for the food pantry, and you know we collect for that, and you know whatever money after expenses we give, we, uh, we whatever we have left over, we give to charities also. So that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, but it's all the report. You know, the Inner Circle show down in New York City, they have professional Broadway stars, and they have people coming uh, and, and doing the show and the script for them. Mm -hmm. You know, we do it all ourselves here in Albany, and we've been doing it since 1900. 116 wow. years, yeah, 115 really? years. Yeah. Wow. Okay. You know, so. Mark was talking about money, you know, the <laughs> cost of the ticket. And actually, a number of years ago, he actually had interviewed Theodore Bacall. And one of his points was, well, one other person like I was doing with Mark, not with Mark, but someone else, they asked him the question, like the Broadway tickets are so expensive. Mm -hmm. But here it's just like I'm thinking there's an opportunity to see a play but on the other hand, it doesn't cost a fortune. Right. So it's in a way there's an advantage to say, having these productions up here. You know, you oh, see yes. the play, you see the play, you know. And, That's right. You know, you go down to New York and by the time you're traveling down there and by the time you pay for the ticket... It's a fortune. A lot oh, of people can't afford it. It's so. a thousand bucks. That's, that's right. Really? It's between. Oh, yeah. 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 You blow a thousand bucks easily if you bring uh, someone with you and you'll stay overnight in the hotel room and yes. eating and everything. I mean, it's just. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Yeah. So, you know, just it's given an opportunity. Like, Mark says, we like the arts. And, I mean, it is. If it would only be Broadway, then, you know, you're boxing out how many people that mm -hmm. wouldn't be able to enjoy these plays. But here again, that. You know, you have an opportunity to see plays. Yes, and you know, uh, I, after I finish my shows, I get such good reviews from the audience. Yeah, you do. I've and been to they, a few of your shows. Yeah. Yes, you've told yeah. me. Yeah. And I think to myself, my people are no less than Broadway. I think they could fit right in Broadway if that was possible. They are, they are very good. I make them very good if they're not. But they usually are on their own. Mm -hmm. I have some actors that are, are so talented. I have one actress, she's just like Carol Burnett. She's so funny. It's just natural for her to be like that. And her name is Harriet. She's my, my long-standing mm -hmm. buddy who's in every one of my shows. And she's brought audiences down laughing so mm. hard. And um, Do you know Chaim Schaefer, Howard Schaefer? I do. He was in one of my shows. Yeah, yes. So. He was in a Shana Madel. Right. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to, he's someone from the observant Jewish community who takes advantage of your, of, of what you offer. With, Howie was you know. wonderful. Yeah. He was great. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. So what would you like people to know about your, uh, about what you do that we haven't brought up yet? Well, basically that um, we're always looking for fresh faces. We're always looking for new talent. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are willing to give people a chance that have never acted before. Um, we love to, we work as a team, very important. It's not where I'm the director and I'm the boss and you have to listen to me. I take your feedback just as much mm -hmm. as I give you feedback. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the actors have great, better ideas than I do. Right. And so I'll be like, sure, you want to use this? That sounds great. Uh-huh. Do you get it? Have you been written up in any of the local papers? And 
How come? They, they, because um, <clears throat> you have to do two weekends in a row. We only do one. So you have to do two weekends in a row before the yeah. Times Union will do mm -hmm. anything? How about Metroland, <coughs> the arts publication? Nobody's reviewed us. The only people that have reviewed us, well, not really reviewed us, but the publisher came from the Berkshires and did the Artful Mind magazine. Yeah. And they did a write-up on us, but that's it. Nobody from here did. Well, I will tell you as a, re as a <laughs> part-time reviewer that I think that, you know, you do a wonderful job and, you know, and, and you should keep up, really keep up the good work. Well, I, I would like to. So many Jewish Thank themed you. plays, they but should you, be reviewed in the Jewish world. They should They be. are, they are. They're not yeah. reviewed, no, they're, they're announced. Not. Yeah, they, they, they're, they're announced they up, in the Jewish yeah, world. That's about, write an article. It's about the best yes. you're going to get. <laughs> yeah, it's the best we can get, really. Um, I go on Channel 9, which used to be YNN, it's now TWC, and scrolls. Uh -huh. on there for like a month, every hour on the hour, announcing the show. We do posters, we, we put them up all over the Capital District, Schenectady, Troy, to announce the show. You know, Mark, it just um, shows we have an exclusive here right, in the whole do. Capital well, District. That we're, having a, we're having a good interview with Iris. Now you and can put the, this on your Facebook page. And yes, I will definitely and, you know. do that, yes. <laughs> this so, is an honor. So, you know, we, uh, you know certainly we want to promote you know, Jewish talent in the Capital District, and you're certainly one of the talent, more talented people we have in the Capital District. Thank so, you. I, you know, you have a lot of uh, good ideas. What's coming up? I guess I was going to ask. Give us a sneak preview yeah. since okay. we, we're getting such an exclusive scoop around here. Um, so we can know next what's week, we start rehearsals for the play that's going to be in May, and that is called Chapter Two by Neil Simon. It's a comedy. Yeah, I and um, too, yeah. I love Neil Simon. I've done some of his shows already. He's very funny. He's he has a way about him. You can't help but love him. Right. So we're doing that, and that's at the end of May. It showtime is May twenty eighth, twenty nine, thirty, and thirty first. Well, you should also do uh, the Goodbye Girl, and I don't think that's I don't a know large if it's cast. A play. I don't think yeah. I don't think it's a large cast, and I don't think it takes a whole lot of different scenery changes. Is it a play? It's, it was a movie, and I think it came from being a remember Martian Mason. I, I've seen it. I've oh. seen it a few times Which when I was younger. Which yeah. yeah. choices are all yours, or you have a board behind you, so people help oh, you? Oh, no, these just... choices are all mine. Yeah. I, I like I do yeah. I do nice, clean plays, family-friendly. Mm -hmm. I won't do anything that is, like, above board. You know, they're all family-friendly. Right. Anybody can come. They're funny. Um, and you were telling me earlier that you put out the money out of I your pocket do. for this and then hope yes. that enough people come to see this where you can get reimbursed. Yes, yes, I do. I think do. that's phenomenal. I really do. I do. Um, I love it so much. I mean, like I said, I don't mind if I lose $100, $150, you know, and I don't match what I put out because you love your passion, so you pay for your passion. But when you start losing large amounts of money, then you're like, well, I have to think about this particular venue or mm -hmm. there wasn't a large enough audience. So, yeah, we... Do you have uh, that booklet that they give out with sponsorships? Um, I, I need never... to apply. I need to apply for us for sponsorship, mm -hmm. for some kind yeah. of a, a grant. Yeah. Yes, yeah. a grant. I need to apply for a grant. Everyone's telling me, you need to apply for a grant. Because yeah, there is money out there, you know, that they say that about the everything arts, yeah. in the arts and college scholarships, you know, people don't have money, well, just apply. There is money out there if you have to right. know how to get well, to but, and, to. and she's not an official 501c3, which is the problem. No, that's them not. That's, That's the other thing, yeah. yeah. You need to be that so they can have you take do. it. The companies can take it as a tax write-off. Right, <laughs> That's right. not all altruistic. <laughs> we started off um, doing fundraisers. We didn't always do it where I dished out the money and kept the ticket sales. My first show at OHOP, the first two shows, were fundraisers. The synagogue, uh, yeah. just minus my expenses, they kept the money. And the first show we did, Crossing Delancey, they made $4,300. In ticket, nice. in ticket sale, they did. And minus my expenses, they still made over $3,000. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's what you get when you market it and you have something mm -hmm. in back of you. To, you, know, you should team up with one of the other synagogues, even in Troy or you mm -hmm. know, yeah. in Schenectady. Agudarachim, maybe. You, know, you should approach them. I mean, they have a lot of 
they have a school there and they have a lot of uh, talent. That's true. So, I haven't ventured out of Albany, though. I probably should. Yeah. I just haven't. It's like I've gone to everyone in Albany. I went to all the synagogues. I really did. Yeah, and you were telling me that they just didn't want to... No. I don't know if it has to do with the fact that um, insurance purposes, I really don't know why they're mm -hmm. against it so you much. You usually put out these plays in the spring. I mean, you just said your next play is going to be in the spring. But I mean, because I know there's a lot of summer venues going on in the Berkshires and Saratoga. Would that be too much competition for you? Yes, because we tried in? one in the, in the summer. We actually tried doing one in July, and like we had a very small audience. Yeah, because there's so much going on. Everything's going on. So I try to stick with fall and spring. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. So yeah. chapter two is coming up. Huh? Chapter two, yes, and and and. I, I heard it was, I have to finish reading it, actually. Oh, okay. um, we're just starting. So um, it was cast. It's already cast. It is. And three of our cast members are Jewish. Uh-huh. Yes, they are. And they came from nowhere. I didn't know these people. They auditioned, and three of them are Jewish. One of them we is... always say that even in Hollywood, there's just an overabundance over the numbers. Yeah, that's I mean, it's true. I mean, percent of the population. There's so many comedians in Hollywood and mm -hmm. actors and directors. It's, yeah. I don't know why. It's an interesting point of view, but it's still the fact is it's, a fact. There's, well, that's why Like you say, Neil Simon is Jewish, and just... Yes. There's just so many... Yes, one of, one of the actors um, auditioned for me, and then later I found out he was Jewish, and he's a doctor. A doctor in the area, yeah. and he's in my play. Ted Zeltner. And I'm like, yes, Ted <laughs> Zeltner. Yes, he is. He's got the lead male role. In where? In, in Chapter 2. Oh, he's going to be in the He's in my play. Okay, well, he's uh, over at, what, where does he work? Where is, did he does he work uh, at Whitney Young. He just oh, took okay, over at Whitney right. Young recently. Yes, yeah. he, and, and he auditioned for me. He was wonderful. Oh, yeah. I, but then later I found out who he was. Like, uh -huh. I didn't know. And well, I was he's like, been... Oh, a doctor's in my show. Well, not just that. He, he was at Park Playhouse plays, and he's mm -hmm. got a long resume of experience. and could always say, you know, there's a doctor in the place. There's <laughs> yeah. a doctor in the house. Yeah, yeah, that's yes, right. yes. And then two other women are Jewish also. Um, they're both from the Berkshires, actually. Okay. And um, they they too came out, you know, um, well, then you can to audition Well, then you can hit me. up the Pittsfield of Berkshire papers and, you know, get them Apparently they will come out here. Yeah. They do. They do. One of them is my friend Harriet Pierceman Candy. Uh -huh. She's she's my long friend. And then a new person, and her name is um, Gail yeah. Schechtman, uh -huh. and she just came out of nowhere. And <laughs> she's a, a very nice Jewish woman, and she's got the female ro lead role. Uh, so when you say that it's an interesting point of view, that's how she came up with the name Point of View Plays. <laughs> I guess <laughs> you, know? you could say that. I also came up how with that you? name yeah. because um, my plays are all very different from each other. They're not your standard cookie cutter plays. I add spice to them. And so I thought of, well, since I add spice, then it's our point of view <laughs> on how the take should be, so how the play should go. And I, so I you gave it that name. You do tune up the plays a little bit, you're saying? I mean, you don't go to the original script, or you change it a little bit? It's not that we change the content of the play. The characters might change their, themselves a little bit to be a little extra than yeah. what's called for. For example, when I did the odd couple female version, uh, my one actress, she might have had to do a certain thing, but she added to it, mm -hmm. like adding seasoning to a already made salad. Right. And it just made it funnier because you were like, wow, she did just, she just <laughs> did that. But it went over well with the audience, you know. And um, so you can be creative, even, you in, can be the, creative, creative yeah. even in a regular play you can yeah well that's a testament you to you that you inspire the creativity to come out of people and you know not just to inhibit people who are on stage so that's phenomenal I do that yeah. I think that's great they're not afraid of me uh, there's nothing to be afraid of okay very no. good all right thank you very much Iris thank that, you um, still looking for Fiddler on the Roof but in any case <laughs> that uh, that may be too big of a production but in any case you've adding a lot to the Capital District in Albany with you know, like Mark said at the beginning with the culture of the arts, and it's important to have arts in our community and to continue with success and even grow bigger and bigger. Thank much you success. Much. Yes, Thank Iris. you. Thank, Thank you, you so much, coming. both of you. Thank you.